We are now going to demonstrate how to record inventory using the FIFO method. As you can see written up here, FIFO means first in, first out. Out refers to sales. So using the FIFO method, we're going to assume that the oldest items are sold first. We're going to demonstrate this using a perpetual inventory method. Under the perpetual inventory record, you record each purchase and each sale as it happens. I am using these tokens, text box actually, on the right hand side to represent physical units of inventory. Each token represents inventory. The green token represents five units of inventory that cost $10 each. The pink tokens represent five units of inventory that cost $12 each. The blue tokens represent five units of inventory that cost $13 each. And the yellow tokens represent five units of inventory that cost $14 each. We are now going to show how we record each transaction one by one using the perpetual inventory method. So we have a beginning inventory of 20 units that cost $10 each. So 20 multiplied 10 gives us a total beginning inventory of $200. And we can see visually in our inventory storage area that we have 5, 10, 15, 20 units of inventory. The next thing that happens is we're going to purchase 30 units of inventory at $12 each, so we pay $360 to the vendor, and then we get delivery of our 30 units. So in, in our inventory storage area, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll arrange these a little bit. And as you can see here, we now have in our inventory storage area 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 units that cost $12 each and 5, 10, 15, 20 units that cost $10 each and notice that we're keeping these from the oldest to the newest so our green items are our oldest units and the pink items items, excuse me, are the next oldest units. Well, the next thing that happens is somebody comes into your room and says, I want to buy 15 of your items. So you go to your instructions. Your instructions say that the oldest items are sold first. So you're going to hand physically 15 units over to your customer and you choose 15 of the green units, the $10 units, because they are the oldest. So what happens is the cost of the sale becomes 15 units that cost $10 each. So the cost of the sale is 15 multiplied by 10, which gives you $150. So you can see here from the worksheet that our revenue is $30 a unit from the sale. So we get $450 from the customer. The units that we sold cost $150. So we have a gross profit of $300 on the sale. Notice that after the sale, we only have five units of the $10 units remaining because we sold 15 of them to the customer. The next thing that happens is we purchase 25 units at $13. So we add them to our inventory storage area. And we unpack them. Oh. Unpack them and arrange them. Try not to resize them, but we move them around. And as you can see here, we now have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 of the blue units in our inventory storage area. 
So after our second purchase, we have some of the beginning inventory remaining. We have all of the $12 units remaining and all of the $13 units in our inventory storage. The next thing that happens is we want to sell 20 of our units. We go to our instructions. Under the FIFO assumption, we sell our oldest items first. So we would assume that we sell out of the $10 units. Notice how we cannot fill the entire sale with the $10 units. So we give the customer five units that cost $10, but we have to fill the remainder of the sale. We need 15 more units, so we go to the next oldest. Five, 10, 15. So you can see visually that the cost of the second sale is five units that cost $10 each, plus another 15 units that cost $12 each. So to calculate the cost of the sale, we take 5 multiplied by 10. The green units cost us $50. The pink units cost us $180. And together, the cost of the sale $230. The final thing that happens is we purchase another 30 units at 14. Our purchase is very easy. It just adds to our inventory storage area. So you can see here, just give me one moment to arrange them. Good, I was afraid that I hit the paste the wrong number of times there, but it appears that I am okay. So as you can see visually, we now have 15 units that cost $12 each in our ending inventory, 25 units that cost $13 each, and 30 units that cost $14 each, and we can visually see the cost of each sale. We can now fill in the basic inventory equation for the entire month. Our basic inventory equation is beginning inventory, add purchases, subtract cost of goods sold, to equal ending inventory. So we can see here that our beginning inventory from our inventory control sheet is $200. Our purchases, we had three purchases, $360, $325, and $420. Adding them together, our total purchases are $1,105. We had two sales. The cost of the first sale was $150. The cost of the second sale is $230. So together, our two sales were $380, total cost of goods sold for the period. And adding down our basic inventory equation, we find that our ending inventory is $925. We can do a check units, unit cost, and total, excuse me, we see here that visually we can see all of the units in our ending inventory. Per our perpetual inventory records, we have 15 units that cost $12 each. We have 25 units that cost $13 each, and 30 units that cost $14 each. So using Excel to multiply out all of the total costs, we 
and adding them all together gives us a calculation of nine hundred and twenty five dollars which matches our basic inventory equation and we can also very easily calculate our gross profit to calculate our gross profit we take our sales revenue and subtract our cost of goods sold and all of those numbers are very easily obtained our sales revenue four hundred and fifty dollars from the first sale six hundred dollars from the second sale one thousand and fifty dollars in sales revenue then we've already calculate our cost of goods sold we can pick that number right up from the basic inventory equation or add the 150 and 230 and our sales revenue minus our cost of goods sold will give us our gross profit for the period six hundred and seventy dollars so I hope this tutorial has helped you visually to see how the FIFO method works in calculating ending inventory, cost of goods sold, and gross profit.